Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Karis Daily Live Bible Study. My name's Claire, and uh, it's an honor for me to be your host this morning. You're going to be blessed today. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We have Barry Bennett here teaching this morning, so um, I'm going to hand you over in a couple of minutes. But let me just go through a few announcements and tell you how the show works if you're not familiar how we do things. So um, you can interact with us if you're watching live, and you can do that by asking questions in the chat section on whatever platform you're watching on. So while Barry's teaching this morning, if he triggers a question or something gets on your heart that you want to ask, go ahead and submit your questions because the last 10 to 15 minutes of this segment we're going to answer as many as we can and you guys always answer ask really good questions so go ahead and submit them and uh, let me give you our um, schedule so you know when to catch us live so we're live Monday through Friday Mondays and Fridays is 10 a.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays is 6 p.m. and Wednesdays bright and early 7 a.m. in the morning and that's all mountain time so you may have to do a little bit of calculating depending on what time zone you're in but um, hopefully you can catch us multiple times a week and then interact with us and um, yeah I hope this show is going to really bless you today in fact I know this show is going to really bless you today and then if you need prayer for anything please don't go alone uh, or don't be alone while you go through something uh, we're just a phone call away pick up the phone and you can speak to one of our prayer ministers and they'd love to pray with you and just you know help you as much as they can through whatever it is that you're going through so the telephone number for that is 719-635-1111 and while you're on the phone with them just ask them about some resources we have over 200,000 hours of resources and all the Different topics of life so I know they'd love to bless you with something so um, yeah take advantage of that and then one last announcement <clears throat> if you are a partner or you donate to this ministry we just want to say a huge thank you it's because of people like you that we're able to put on programs like this and it blesses so many more people so um, thank you if you do partner and if you would like to partner or donate you can call the prayer line again the number is 719-635-1111 or you can go online to awmi.net forward slash give and they make it super simple so just a big thank you again um, uh, if you do give or donate um, to this ministry. So now I'm going to hand you over to our wonderful Barry Bennett. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you doing? I am blessed. How are you? I'm wonderful. Good. Amen. <laughs> so if you're not familiar with who Barry is, I'm sure you are. But if you're not, he's our senior instructor here at Karis. And um, he teaches so many of our lessons. And I think you're the favorite. Well. You're, I, I know you're the favorite. So <laughs> I think that might go to Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> it's a close tie, yeah. very, very close tie. But um, I'm excited to hear what you have for us this morning. Amen. Me so, too. Yes. So <laughs> thanks. Over good. to you, sir. Thank you. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I hope you are blessed. And uh, today is going to be a blessed day for all of us. Praise God. I want to talk with you this morning about the power of God's Word and just how the nature of God's Word meets our needs or every need that you have can be met through the Word of God. But when we talk about the Word, we need to take it away from the idea of a static uh, print on paper, uh, a book of rules or mm. something of that nature. And we need to understand truly that the Word is alive. The Word is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, it says. Uh, the Word carries the nature of God. And when you think about it, words are encapsulated thoughts. Uh, you have a thought, you put it into a word that hopefully will describe that thought. And when God speaks, he is encapsulating his thoughts. I know the thoughts that I have for, towards you, he says. He's speaking those thoughts out in words, and the words carry the nature of their source. Or in other words, your thoughts begin in your heart. They are developed as a vision they become a thought, they then are turned into words. And so when we're talking about God's words, we're talking about God's heart. We're talking about that which he carries within, the vision that he has for his children. 
and what he wants to see happen in our lives. And so from the heart of God, we get the thoughts of God encapsulated in the word of God. And then we have the blessing of having it written for us, printed for us. And we can go to the Word, and so when we go to the Word, we shouldn't go to it as some static thing, but rather as a living representation of the heart of God. And when we see it that way, then we can begin to enter into a place of fellowship with God through His living Word. Mm. And it becomes so much more than just reading your Bible, reading your chapter a day, or read, just reading for the sake of reading uh, out of an obligation. It can become a place of real fellowship, and it can become a place of hearing Him and that's where faith is activated. Faith cometh by hearing. Faith, faith is going to be activated as the word is quickened to us. And it will be quickened to us if we understand that it's alive. The word is alive. Uh, and the, to the degree that we believe that and understand that, then that word can come into our lives, have a place in our heart that can become our thoughts. And then we can begin to agree with it with our words and it's all coming from God's heart, and that's powerful. It's, gonna, it's going to change our lives. It's interesting, when the angel came to Mary to announce uh, the, the birth of Jesus or to announce that she was going to conceive of the Holy Spirit, and the angel said to her something in uh, Luke 137. Luke 137, he says, For with God nothing will be impossible. For with God nothing will be impossible. And she goes on to say in verse 38, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. Or in other words, she was agreeing with the word or she was allowing that word to be conceived in her, which mm -hmm. ultimately is, is Jesus, the word made flesh. I mean, there's a lot there. There's, that's powerful. But when the angel said, for with God, nothing will be impossible. When you, when you go to the, the Greek and you put a more literal rendition on this, it says, for from God, no word shall be without power. Mm, from good. God, no word <laughs> shall be without power. I've heard other teachers say that from God, no word will be without the power to fulfill itself. Or in other words, a word from God is very much like a seed. In fact, Jesus calls the word the seed in the parable of the sower. A word is a seed that carries the nature of its source. And so when God speaks, his words are coming from his heart, his nature. And the, in the seed of the word, just like the seed of, a, we'll say, a watermelon, it carries the nature of its source and the potential of where it came from. Mm. And so if we plant a watermelon seed, we're going to get watermelons. If we let the word be planted in our hearts, the word of God that came from his heart, through his mind, in his words, and we hear it and receive it, and then, as Mary said, let it be unto me, according to your word. She agreed with the word of God. You know, the word is a seed that is looking for an environment. Right. And the, the, the right environment for the seed of God's word is the human heart mm. that believes it and receives That's it. So good. Yeah. And when we receive God's word, his promises, his declarations, uh, we're allowing that word to go to work within us the, in the soil of our heart, and it will reproduce according to its kind. Mm. And the kind is going to be the promise that God has declared. He's going to, he's making a promise that he wants us to know, not just statically or not just uh, know, sterilely in our minds, yeah. but that it find a place in our hearts. And then that word, that promise, that declaration is going to reproduce according to its nature, which is the nature of God. All right, so that's, that's a mouthful right there, but now I'm trying to set the table here so that we can see that as I go through this lesson, that everything you need in life, everything God wants you to have, the abundant life is all contained within and available to you through his word. And as we have fellowship with him through his word, those words come to have place in our heart and they begin to reproduce according to their kind. And so that's the direction I wanna go with you uh, this morning as we, as we look at this, is that your needs are met through the Word of God. If you have a need, then it can be met through God's Word. Amen. Praise God, the mm -hmm. Word is alive, the Word is powerful, the Word is not dead. It is not just a principle or a rule or a law. It is a living manifestation of God's heart for your life. That blesses me. So when I read the Word, and I tell the students many times, when I open my Bible, without fail, every time I open my Bible, there is kind of a little, shiver that goes through me, if that's a good word, I don't know if that's the right word, but I, there's just an excitement yeah. 
of I'm about to get blessed because the word is alive. Uh, and I read looking for life. I read looking for the heart of God. I read looking for the nature of God, uh, things that I know he wants for me, that he wants for you. And then I begin to believe that. It's the believing heart that releases the power that's in the word that came from God's heart. So awesome. All right, it is, it's, well, it's super awesome. What a difference from like, sometimes you're like, okay, I need to eat my vegetables because I know they're really good for me, right? Like, oh, like sometimes I need to read the word because I know it's good for me. And you almost put like a negative it's thing an, on it. Like, it becomes like, an obligation, oh, yeah. but not, a, not an adventure. Exactly, yeah. but to see it the way you've done it, that like, you're like, oh my goodness, I'm just soaking it up. Right, That's awesome. amen. Yeah. God. Well, let's get started. So first one I have for you, we're gonna look at different needs that the word meets. All right, and, we're, and just meditate on these, write them down if you will, uh, jot down these scriptures and then go back when you have time in the day or during the week and meditate on these uh, and get the life because in, in these promises is the life of God for you, for your needs. So we're gonna go to Psalm 107 verse 20. Psalm 107 verse 20 says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Powerful. And many of you probably are very familiar with this scripture. But this, the word meets the need for healing and health. We could go to Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. The word is health to your flesh. We could go, in fact, I have that next here, so we, we will do that. <laughs> but uh, he sent his word. He sent his word to heal us and to deliver us. So in the word of God, in the promises of God, we find the heart of God, we find the nature of God, we find the life of God, we find the power of God, and that nature, that heart, that life, that power has been sent to heal you on every level, spirit, soul, and body. But specifically, we're going to, let's talk about the body. The word of God in you is going to bring health to your flesh. It's going to bring life to your flesh. And if something comes against you, then if you have this foundation of God's word in you, there is a resistance. There is an, an opportunity to resist, to believe, to know that God wants you well. And he sent his word specifically for you to be well. Let's go to Proverbs 4, as I mentioned, 20 through 22. Proverbs 4, 20 says, My son, uh, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Meaning when you incline your ear, you're leaning forward. Uh, you, you're giving attention if, if you're in a, a noisy restaurant or something. Yeah. You're giving, you're trying to hear, but then you want to hear better. So you... You lean forward. We incline our ears toward the things of God, or we're focused. We give value to what God says, and we, want, we don't want to miss anything. And so we incline. He goes on to say, do not let them depart from your eyes. Again, what's valuable to you? Focus on that which is valuable. Don't let the word of God depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh, so the word can bring health to your flesh. If you are allowing it to find a place in your heart, if your heart is open, if your heart is receptive, if you meditate on these things day and night uh, and give, give attention to and lean toward, incline yourself toward the word of God, there is a power within the word that is going to, re or is going to manifest the nature, the life and the purpose of God in you and it's going to find its way into your flesh and it's going to bring health Amen. and healing. Amen. Praise God, that's yeah. good stuff. Another thing the word will do, many of you are, have families, you have children, uh, the, the word in you can bless your children. It says in yeah. Psalm 112, Psalm 112 verses one and two. Psalm 112 verses one and two says, blessed is the man that fears the Lord that delights greatly in his commandments. Well, let's, let's move that over to new covenant terminology. We delight greatly in his covenant or in his promises. Do you delight in his promises, the promises of his covenant that he has made with us through Jesus? Let's go back and read again. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commandments, or we'll say his covenant or his promises. His seed, meaning his children, shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. If you are delighting yourself in the Lord and in his word and in his promises, who's, and you have a family, who's going to get the overflow from that? Right. Who's going to be living in the glow from, from that in your life? Your children are going to yeah. see that. Your children are going to see you loving God. Your children, your children need to see you loving God. It's a different message, but 
two things children need to see is their parents loving each other and loving the Lord. And that is going to change their lives. And it's going to be something by, so we could say yeah. osmosis, it's going to be something that happens just from the environment that your relationship with God is creating in the house. Yeah. The spiritual environment changes if the parents love the Lord and value the so Word true. of God. Yep. And they're, they're, it's just <clears throat> going to come out. It's going to, they're going to share with their kids what they're learning. They're going to uh, have Bible studies with their kids. If you're excited about God's Word, it will change your children. It's, it's just the environment you're, you're creating in the spirit. So your kids can be blessed after you. And they, it says they will be mighty upon the earth. Praise God, they shall be blessed. And that's, that's what we want for our children, for our grandchildren, amen. Let's move on to another thing. What else can the word do for your life? Now you may not like this one, but it's a good one. The word can bring correction and instruction to your life. Mm. Uh, I won't ask for a show of hands. But, <laughs> it's uh, just me. I think, <laughs> <laughs> Most of us probably need some correction and some instruction. Uh, we need some wisdom. We need, we've made mistakes. And so the word brings that wisdom, that correction, that instruction to us. Let's go to uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And it says all scripture is given by inspiration. It's talking about the word of God is inspired by God to accomplish the purpose of God. Mm. It, is, it is designed to prosper in, into that which he has sent it. And that's Isaiah 55, 11. Uh, we may look at that in a minute, I don't know, but, but it says, in, going back to 2 Timothy 3, it says, all scripture is given, or every word of God is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Well, I want to profit. Profitable for doctrine, for reproof. Well, there's a correction. And it goes, the next word is synonymous for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God or the man or woman of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Or in other words, if you want to be walking in this level of completeness, that's what the word perfect means, uh, it's going to come through instruction. It's going to come from correction. It's going to be by the word that has been inspired by God that carries his life, his promises, his wisdom. And as you receive that word, it's going to prepare you for life. It's going to prepare you for the abundant life. There are so many Christians that are they're, they're walking in darkness, so to speak. They're confused. They don't know what to do. They don't know what God's will is for their life. They don't understand this. They don't know why they don't receive that. Everything is, is confusion in their life. And it's because they aren't letting the word instruct them. They're not letting the life of the word correct them. Uh, we all need that. And don't, we don't need to get puffed up, well, I, I don't need anything, I, I know what I'm about. Well, maybe you don't. And maybe you're bumping into some walls along the way because you're not letting the word instruct you. You're not submitting to the word of God. And so that's something else the word can do for us is it can give us the wisdom to move into the abundant life and to walk in the, into the, ble the best that God has for us. Amen. That's awesome. Can All right. Add something to that? Absolutely. You know, going back on your previous point about your children, you know, being blessed when the parents, my son, what's even like, okay, so the word corrects me often, but sometimes what really cuts real deep is when my son corrects me through the word that I've taught him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh, <Amen>. snap. <laughs> He's done that a couple of times. I'm like, you're right. You're, I'm sorry. You're right. And you, ha you have grace for that. Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's move on to another one. All of the promises of God have been given to us that we might be partakers of his divine nature. Let's read this in 2 Peter 1, 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4. It says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. I hate to keep stopping and talking, but I can't help it. Uh, did, did you know that the, the promises of God, they're not just good, they're exceeding and they're mm, great. Amen. Because they come from the one who is exceeding and great. They come from the heart of God. They have been, they've come from the vision that God has for you and have been turned into thoughts which have been encapsulated in words which have been written on the page for you. Those words are alive and they are promises because God wants you to be blessed. And a lot of people have a hard time with that. They think God wants me to be chastised, disciplined, mm. uh, suffer, yeah. and all of this kind of stuff. No, God wants you to be blessed. In fact, the word chastised means instructed and nurtured, actually. Huh. It's a different, I taught that yesterday in school. 
Some of you need wow. to come to school. Yes, I, I need to come back to school. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, we can't do everything in a 30 minute Bible study. We, yeah. it, it, we have so much at, at school that we teach and it would really bless you. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back, I'm sorry. Let's read these verses again. Second Peter 1, 3 and 4 says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you may, might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Amen. Mm. The promises of God have been given to us that we might partake of his very nature and thereby escape the corruption that's in the world. Do you, have you noticed there's corruption in the world? My goodness, we're living in a world that is just yep. absolutely falling apart. Yeah. Uh, and yet that's not God's will for his children. Right. His will is that we escape the corruption, that we partake of his nature, that we live the abundant life. All of the promises that Jesus gave in scripture, he gave during Roman occupation, Roman oppression, during hard times. That didn't stop him from giving us promises of abundant life and that our joy might be made full and that we might receive what we ask. All of those promises were made during hard times. And so we can't say, well, that was for some other time and it's not for us. No, it's for us, even in the world in which we live. Mm. He's given us his promises that are exceeding and great that we might be partakers of his nature and escape the corruption. Doesn't mean it won't be around us, but we don't have to partake in it. We don't have to live there. But you're only going to enjoy this if you get into a place of true fellowship with him in his word and we learn these promises and we open our hearts, the soil of our hearts to receive the seed of God's word. And we let that word go to work. We meditate on it. We, we declare it. We think about it. We, we spend time, much time, as much as you can, giving the attention to his word. And I tell you what, you may not know that it's happening, but it's happening. If you put a seed in the dirt, it's happening. Something is going to start working. It's going to start growing. If you put the seed of God's word in your heart, you may not have an, a sensation of anything happening, but over time, if you're faithful to that word, if you water it, if you give it light, if, in other words, if you give it time and you stay in the truth of God's word, it's going to work and it's going to change your life and you can escape corruption that's in the world. I think that's a, that's a pretty good deal right there is uh, to have an abundant life in spite of a world that's Amen. collapsing around yep. us. Amen. Let's go on. Let's look at another one. Long life and peace. How many of you want long life and peace? Amen. I see those hands. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's go to Proverbs 3, 1 and 2. Proverbs 3, 1 and 2. Solomon is writing and he says, my son, forget not my law. So we'll make that our covenant in the new, new covenant. The principles are the same. Forget not my law, but let your heart keep my commandments or hold on to my promises. For length of days and long life and peace, they shall add to you. Or in other words, if you want to lengthen your life and have peace, get into God's word. Mm. That's where it is. The promises of God, the, he sent his word to heal us and deliver us from destructions. All these things we're looking at are going to be met or the needs that you have will be met through God's word through his promises and through your decision to meditate in and stay in that environment of his word. Uh, again, his word is his nature revealed through thoughts that are spoken, that have been written, that you can receive, that are alive. And if you have faith that they are alive, they will change your life. Amen. They will change the course of your life. So long life and peace, let's move on. How many of you would like some wisdom? Yo, yes, please. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to Proverbs 2, 6 and 7. Proverbs 2, 6 and 7 says, For the Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them, or a belt buckle, <laughs> we could say, mm -hmm. to them that walk uprightly. The Lord gives wisdom, and so many of us are lacking wisdom and it's not God's fault. It's our fault. That's true. We are not yep. seeking the wisdom of God through his word, but he, his heart is to give you wisdom. He wants his children to be the shining lights of wisdom and knowledge and understanding mm. in the earth. We should be the ones showing the way uh, to, the, to the lost. So many times, unfortunately, it's the Christians that seem more lost than anybody else. I know. Uh, but it's because we're not 
soaking in God's word. We're not letting that seed of the word find the soil of our heart. Uh, perhaps we're living on a level of fear or emotionalism or anxiety or depression. We're living on a very superficial level. But if we would stop and let the word have a place in our heart and let it, let it uh, marinate, that's the word I've been looking for. Okay. <laughs> let the word marinate <laughs> within us, then it would begin to grow according to its kind, according to its mm. nature, the nature of God, the blessings of God. Amen. So wisdom is another area. Let's move on to another one here. Communion with God. Communion with God. Let's read John 14, 23. John 14, 23, your communion with God is going to depend upon the word of God. It says in John 14, 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. There it is. Keep can in indicate all kinds of things, but not only submitting to and obeying, but meditating on, giving attention to, he will keep my words. All right. If a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode in him. Or your fellowship with God is going to take place to the degree that his word is alive within you, that you're giving attention to, you're valuing the word of God, you understand the life of the word. And that is going to take you to a place of fellowship that you've never imagined. And in that fellowship, that's where you're going to hear God. Your things will be quickened to you by the spirit yeah. and faith comes by hearing. Or in other words, faith is going to be the outflow of fellowship. And fellowship is the result of you being in the word. The word is carrying the very nature and life of God. And so if we're saying, well, I, I wish God would do this for me, or I wish God would do that for me, or why doesn't this happen? Or, and many times it's not, it's, God is not involved in this lack at all. God has done everything to make his abundance available, but we aren't taking the time to meditate, to think about, to value, to focus in on the word of God, to know the promises, to believe them, to declare them. That's where all of this takes place. And that's why we get questions every week and I appreciate the questions, but some people I see a repetition of their questions and it's more frantic than it is uh, a revelation of peace right. and fellowship with the Father. It's more of why can't <laughs> this, why doesn't this happen faster? And you know, you can't harvest corn the day after you plant it. Yeah. You know, some things take time and the word, it needs time mm. to marinate, as I said, or to grow within our spirits, within our hearts. Amen. So communion with God. Let's go on. Confidence in prayer. John 15, 7. John 15, 7 says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. If you abide in me and my words abide that doesn't mean visit, that means dwell, yeah. live. If you abide, now if, not if you just visit me on Sundays, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask whatever you want because you're going to know what you want based on the promises of God that you've seen. And it will be done for you. That's a, I mean, that's a pretty that's, huge yeah. promise Powerful. that God yeah. makes. But it's about the abiding part. Does his word abide in you? Or does the news abide in you? Mm. Or does Hollywood abide in you? Or does all the, all the sports scores, do they abide in you? What's abiding in you? Where do you spend the most time getting fed? You're going to be in tune with whatever feeds you. And if it's the news that feeds you, you're going to be in tune with all the fear and the upheaval and the turmoil. That's what you're going to be sensitive to. If Hollywood feeds you, then you're going to be thinking about the latest movies and TV shows and what have you, I don't know. What feeds you is what's going to grow within you and produce according to its nature, its kind. If the word is feeding you, if you are, are in this place of meditation and, and giving attention to and praying over, uh, thanking God for his word, if that's where you're at, if that's what's feeding you, then that's what's going to grow in you. Amen. And that's where these exceeding great promises will come alive in your life. So we have confidence in prayer as we abide in his word and as his word abides in us. Let's do one or two more here and then we'll get to some questions. Okay. Let's talk about success and prosperity. How many of you want to have success in life? God wants Amen. you to have success yep. even if you're not sure about it. Right. Uh, God wants you to be prosperous on every level, spirit, soul, body, emotions, <laughs> mentally, <laughs> relationally, physically. God wants you to prosper in and, and every sense of the word. 
he said to Joshua, and again, we'll take it from the old covenant uh, concepts into the new covenant concepts here. But he says in Joshua 1.8, Joshua 1.8 says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Or the, let's change it. This, this, this covenant of promises shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do all that is written therein, for then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. Mm. That's the heart of God. If that was the heart of God for His people under the law, how much more under a better covenant that is established Amen. on better yep. promises? Amen? Yep. And so we can take the principle, move it over into our better covenant with better promises. It's the same thing. Jesus just said it, that if we abide in Him and His words abide in us, we can ask what we will. Well, that's, that's prosperity. That's success. And He's saying to Joshua, you can have success. You can have pros a prosperous life if you keep this word in your mouth. Mm. Well, where do the words of our mouth come from? Wow. Jesus said in Matthew 12, out of the abundance of the heart, yep. the <coughs> mouth speaks. Yep. What's in your heart? There we go. Yeah. What's in our hearts that we're thinking about and forming thoughts, which then come forth as words? What, where is this coming from? And if our heart is in tune with God's heart and God's word, then what is coming out of our mouth is going to have the life, the life of God, the power of God, the potential of God Amen. for our lives. So all of our needs are met in the word of God. Amen. Amen. So to the degree that we suffer lack, it's a lack of the word. It's a lack of the revelation of God's word in our life. And I, this is not, I'm not trying to put a guilt trip on anyone. I'm, I'm receiving this as I speak as well. Mm. That to, to, to the degree that I have any lack in my life, I've got to be honest and be humble and say, okay, this is a lack of the word. I need more word because every need is met. He's given you these exceeding great and precious promises that by them you might partake of his divine nature or we could say the abundant life, it's possible. It is possible. I don't care what you're going through right now. There is more for you. It is possible. Your healing is possible. Your relationships can be restored. Things can happen good for you in your life if the word becomes your, the love of your life. Let me read one more scripture and then I'll turn it over to Claire for yep. some questions here. Jeremiah 15, 16. Jeremiah 15, 16, I love this one. Jeremiah says, your words were found and I ate them. Mm. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Your words were found and I ate them. I remember when I was a, a, a young Christian, I just got addicted to the word. I bought a, a New Testament, a living New Testament, a paperback. I bought a yellow highlighter. And I just, I started skipping classes in college because I wanted to read my Bible. <laughs> it didn't turn out too well. Well, it did in the, it long, did, in the long run, right. it did. Uh, but I just, I was highlighting. I just wanted, I just ate the mm. word all the time. Uh, and people that are experiencing the good things of God are usually addicted to the word of God. That's and true. so that would be my exhortation for you this morning. Your needs are met in the Word of God. Fall in love with it. Let the nature of God reproduce in you, and, and you'll see the promises of God coming to pass. Amen. Amen. That was awesome. All right. Very, very awesome. Barry, we've had so many questions come in, so I'm going to apologize ahead of time because I know we're not going to get to all of these. Um, we'll try and get to some on Tuesday. On Tuesday, which will be me. So. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So, Barry will answer your questions on Tuesday. I'll try. <laughs> okay. So, um, Joan on Facebook is asking, in 1 Corinthians 7, 14, it says the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. What does sanctified mean in this verse? Okay. Great question. Where am I going? Here we go. All right. Uh, sanctified does not mean saved because it goes on to say that if you... Uh, allow the person to live with you and you maintain that relationship in spite of their unbelieving state. They, it says, who knows, O man or O woman, whether or not you will have your husband or wife will be saved. And so sanctification is not meaning necessarily saved, but it is meaning set apart in the sense that the, the, because of this covenant relationship with one who is a believer and one who is not a believer, the potential for them to come to know the Lord is far greater. They are set apart in that sense because of the blessing of that covenant relationship. So that as, as we pray for them, I, I, this is me, I think it means that there is a greater opportunity for the Spirit of God to work in their life 
and bring them to a place of, of receiving the Lord. Amen. That's awesome. So that's, that's my quick take. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Um, okay, Abner on YouTube is asking, are there any practical steps to uh, walk in, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me? Well, that's, that's simply the revelation of His grace. God has given us the grace to walk a victorious life, to walk an abundant life. And so we submit ourselves to those declarations rather than saying, no, I, I can't do that. I'm just a worm, a sinner saved by grace. I'm, no, we need to step up to what God has said about us. That's true humility. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can't do, and I'm, I, I turn this around in school sometimes and say, some people get puffed up and they say, I can do all things through me who strengthens me. <laughs> right. And no, yeah. you can't. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't do these things in our own strength. Mm -hmm. But if we recognize the grace of God and we recognize the promises of God and we recognize we need God in our lives, then yes, we can receive the grace strength to go through whatever storm may be happening. Uh, it is possible. Now, practical steps, I think I just gave you several here in this, in this lesson. These are, the, these are the things we need to do. We need to get in fellowship with God through His Word. Uh, not just reading and trying to look for step one, step two, step three, but rather having a true fellowship, a dynamic fellowship, believing the Word is alive and letting it uh, produce its nature in us. Mm, that's, that's powerful. That's really good. Um, okay, Kelly Ann on Facebook is asking, how do you know if you're supposed to seek medical attention or believe in healing? Uh, let the Lord tell you. I, that, that's, uh, it sounds simplistic, but uh, I have had experiences where the Lord was very clear to me, no, this is not the route for you. In fact, I had a situation like that even this week. Uh, this is not the route for you, and I want you to believe me. And so I, I have at num numerous times over the years have declined medical attention, even to the point of being in a hospital, being prepped for a, a procedure the Spirit of God said no, and I just said, please take out the tubes, please let me get up and go home, and, and I did. Uh, so I know what that is like, I, but that's a word from God. Other times, I, with my recent bout with cancer, uh, I had a, a peace, I won't say I had a word from God, I just had a peace, I knew I was going to live, and I had a peace to go through the medical procedure. Uh, so you just have to hear from God, and you'll know when you know, because faith, faith comes alive when we hear God. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Amen. That's that's really good. Um, okay, Shweta, Shweta. I apologize, guys. My name gets butchered every day, so I apologize if I butcher yours. Um, Shweta on Facebook is asking, how do we focus on the word when we don't see any remarkable changes? I know the word of the Lord is powerful, but how do we see its manifestation? It takes time. How do you see crops grow? <coughs> How does a tree grow? You plant an acorn, uh, the oak tree isn't there the next day or even the next month. Sometimes it can be decades. Uh, and I'm not trying to discourage anyone, but some things that God has spoken to me, I was just talking to my wife the other day. I had some promises from God that were spoken to me or quickened to me in the 90s, the early 90s, that are now coming to pass, we'll say 30 years later. Wow. So it's, some things take time. Not everything has to take time. But seeds have to be planted for there to be a harvest. Uh, a lot of people are praying over the dirt, you know, saying, please produce, 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 but there's no seed in the dirt. There's no promise that's been uh, revealed to your heart. Nothing has been declared. Nothing has been uh, stood upon. You're not standing upon anything, but you're expecting a harvest. And so we need to realize there's a, the time of God is the time between the, the sowing and the reaping. We need to get some seed in the ground, or in other words, we need to get, get into this, what I've just discussed, and know that the Word of God is at work. It carries the life of God, but there may be a process of time involved. By faith and patience, we inherit the promises, Hebrews 6.12. And so we've got to realize there is a, a, a time involved in many of these things. Don't lose heart. Yeah. Uh, in due season, it says in Galatians, we will reap if we do not grow weary. So yeah. there is a due season. Uh, some things are miracles. That's the due season gets compressed into an instant. Some things are a process and it, it takes time. Yeah, that's really, really good. Um, okay, Aristides on YouTube is asking, have you ever tried for a period of time praying in tongues while reading the Bible? 
and experienced more revelation because of it? Probably. I don't, I, I, I've been walking with God for a long, long time, 49 years. And so I, I'm sure I've done that. I've spoken in tongues. I speak in tongues all the time, pray in tongues all the time. Uh, and so, yes, I ex I'm always expecting more revelation. So whether I'm reading without praying in tongues or reading with praying in tongues, in either case, I'm expecting revelation. But that could be uh, a good place to start uh, is praying in the spirit and believing that God is going to speak to you while you're while you're reading. Amen. I'm all for it. Amen. That's awesome. Um, OK, so Doris on YouTube is asking, how does spending time in the written word balance with communion with the Holy Spirit? It's the same thing. Uh, Jesus says in John 6, 63, my words are spirit and they are life. So when you're in the word, you're in the spirit. Now, you, if you don't believe that, then it's going to be minimal for you. But if you believe that the word of God is alive and active and that it, it is spirit, then as you are communing with the word, you are communing in the spirit. And it's the spirit that will quicken these, these words to you and faith will come. So it's uh, being in the word, unless if you're approaching it as a, as a scholarly uh, treatise on history and culture, and if you're approaching it that way, yeah, that's not gonna produce a whole lot for you. But if you see it as, as the promises of God, the life of God, mm -hmm. the power of God in those words, and you're looking for his promises, his nature, you're looking for your identity in Christ, every good thing that God has said about us, uh, then that's going to, yes, that's going to produce the spiritual uh, dynamic or impact that you're looking for. That's really good. Um, okay, Arlene on Facebook is asking, if we are created in his image, is the spirit of God in our heart? Is it only awaken, sorry, if we are created in his image, is the spirit of God in our heart? That's the first part of the question. Is it only awakened if you ask Jesus into your heart? And if not, can one still hear God's voice? Well, we have all through the Bible, unbelievers have heard God's voice. Uh, God speaks and some pe sometimes people hear things. Uh, they don't always interpret it or understand it, right. but God is speaking. God is drawing people to himself. He's trying to. Uh, so re I'm sorry, do it again. No worries. Um, if we are created in his image, is the spirit of God in our heart? Yes. Okay. Is it only well, awakened? everyone, excuse me. That's all right. I'm, try, I'm trying to figure the You're, question okay, out okay, yeah. Uh, every, every person on earth has a spirit, a human spirit, okay? When we are born again, it is recreated in the image of God and we become one spirit with him. That's 1 Corinthians 6, 17. We become one spirit with him. And so our spirit now is identical to his spirit and his spirit communes in us when we get born again. That's awesome. You've answered the question. Okay. I, I, to, to me, you have. I hope, I hope okay. it made sense to you too. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we have time for uh, one more. Okay. Um, whoop, we've had a little bit of a glitch. Okay. Um, all right, Veggie Planet on YouTube is asking, how do you know for sure that what is in your heart is from the Lord or not, uh, or not speaking in a decision matter? Well, if you've heard from God, again, I, I'm being redundant here, but faith comes by hearing. So if you have come into a place of faith that you know that you know and you have the peace of God surrounding that, then you've heard from God and you know that. But if you're in doubt, if you're, if you're on the fence, so to speak, or double-minded, as James says, uh, then you haven't heard yet. So I would say stay in the word until you know that you know that you know. And that's where the peace will come from and the faith to follow. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, for us, that's been our biggest guide. Like if we have two good opportunities presented to us, where's the peace? Yeah. We just follow that sometimes that's the yeah, only thing It doesn't mean necessarily do. peace of the circumstances. It just means no, the peace in of God yes, in, in your heart. Yep. Yeah. Whatever feels right. right. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I knew we weren't going to make it. There were so many questions okay. that came in. So you guys, thank you so much for submitting them. Um, Barry has the honor of going through them. <laughs> Do my best. <laughs> so thank you for today. Barry, thank you. This was thank you. fantastic. Amen. I, I love this. Um, I know you guys have been blessed as well. So thank you for joining us. And uh, today's Wednesday. So tomorrow it will be 6 p.m. Mountain Time for our next live Bible study. And um, until then, have a fabulously blessed day. Amen. Bye-bye. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 